no pressure whatsoever. Thanks, guys. No, it's no, it's good. And hello, everybody. My name is uh, Matthew Powers. I am the professor of well, one of the professors of gaming here at uh, good old Media Arts and Science through the School of Informatics and Computing. Uh, I do uh, game one, game three. We do game design, psychology, design, and prototyping. Uh, we do history of video games, which everybody loves, which we just got done with Summer Session 2, and we got all the way up to the PlayStation 5 and the potential Xbox 5, or whatever it's called, or going to be called. And then we all, I also do sequential narrative, i.e. comics. If you can draw a stick figure, you can pass the class. And then my personal favorites are the creature alien uh, design classes, where we get you guys to try to draw non-humans and create an emotional connection with bizarre things. So... I'm very honored by Angela and Taylor's invite today to let you guys see a little bit of what we're doing because uh, we didn't have this when I was at school. So we don't want to throw you in the deep end. I want to give you some idea of what's going on and what happens as you get in here. And like I said, if you're into gaming or you want a really good elective, I will be your guy. I will be the guy that you're doing. So hello, Devin, Maddie, Logan, Justin, and Quentin. Nice to see you all. And then it looks like Taylor is, uh, okay, ta oh, those, those are from you guys. Okay, yeah, those are chats and YouTubes. Anyway, so, okay, so uh, just to explain a few things to you guys, and I'll share my screen with you. We, uh, in the gaming track, we have, uh, we kind of try to do, it's really odd. We try to do a right, central, and left hemisphere kind of way. So it's myself and Travis Foss and a few others. But uh, gaming, uh, I was asked a couple years ago by a dean, uh, you can make a game without being a master programmer? And I'm like, yes. And he was like, what? So yes, guys, gaming has everybody in it. That's the thing. Bethesda, you guys know that made Skyrim. They had a core group of 300 people. It took them five years, $3 million. That's the core stuff. So gaming is looking for, you know, programmers, designers, UI, sound, uh, and sound and music, Foley. Uh, we need people to boss other people around. So we need project directors and program managers. Uh, we need all that stuff, you know, and even independent games, you got to have three or four people working on this thing. And the other thing I'm really, oh, hi, Gabrielle, welcome, and Theron, good to see you, or not see you, at least I see the names. And uh, the ga thing about gaming is that's open to everybody and anybody. So that's what we try to do. And in game, now the initial classes, history of games, we try to give you some idea of where, you, where you're coming from. We look at our Greek hist our geek history. And then uh, in the game prototyping class, I get you guys to make some uh, basic uh, card dice board games because honestly, uh, like the guys at uh, Spore, they said, if you can't make a game fun on the board, then it's not gonna be fun digitally. So we get all the psychology and all the rules and the stuff in and out, back and forth, and we get that done. So by the time you get to game one with me in N230, then you're ready to apply gaming principles with the actual technology. So I try not to cram the technology and everything together. Does that make sense to everybody? If you can, nod behind your blank screens. Okay, good. Thank you. Very good. Very nice. Anyway, and then, uh, but, game, but also, for those of you that know or don't know, the two biggest engines in the world right now are Unreal, which is just about to release Unreal 5, God give me strength, and, uh, and then Unity. So what, I, what we do is we do into 30 with Unreal and get you into that because it's an easy to get into game program. Uh, thank you, Quentin. Yes, thank you. Now, yes, I'm nodding with Quentin. God bless you, Quentin. And then there's Unity, because because uh, if you want to get into a AAA studio or even like a AA studio, you got to know some Unreal. If you want to go independent or go into some other areas of gaming, uh, you can go into Unity. They're both valid. They're both great. They're both competing like CVS and Walgreens or McDonald's or Burger King at the thing like this. And if you know both of them, then you're pretty much a pretty good unstoppable machine in the industry. And I will point this out, Angela and Taylor will love this. It's if you learn these engines, they're not even used for gaming as much as they used to be. They're actually architectural firms that use these. There are lighting programs and VR programs. And then my favorite thing, which I need to bring up, is they actually have a QR code car. So when I was at the Game Developers Conference a couple years ago, they had this car on stage and the, and the car actually got bigger and smaller and wider and it's covered in QR codes. I'll see if I can bring it up. I'm gonna share my screen here in a minute. And uh, the thing was is that a lot of the commercials you're seeing on TV are actually this car driving around with a shell. They can literally put any car, make and model and color live rendered on anything. So they can make you go from a van to a race car to red, blue, yellow, green, old, fast, whatever. So it's amazing to see this car drive and then, you know, turn into anything else. So Unreal and Unity are being used for multiple purposes because they are, you know, I mean, Maya's great, other 3D programs are great, but like with Unreal, you got assets you can drop in. You've got instant VR, you've got 
instant gravity, all these fun things right there. Let me, I forgot to bring it up. Let me look at, let me type Unreal QR code car. It'll come right up. So just to give you an idea, there we go. Oh, oh no, there we go. Oh, sorry, just a second. So, so that's what we do. So again, the first class uh, in 230 is about getting you guys in there and it's a straight off the street class, okay? So you don't have to know any 3D, any gaming, anything, or programming or anything. So you just come on in, we get you in the shallow end of the pool and we make a level, we make a basic level. And then uh, in, in Travis's class, then you start working with Unity, you start working in groups, doing a little bit more, a few individual games. And then by the time you get to 430, which is the advanced game class, at that point, you know both engines, at least pretty well, we put you into groups and then we spend the time looking over theory and public persona, public, you know, public uh, publications. And uh, we get the stuff out there. We uh, last year had four games, one Unreal, three Unity. They all published on itchio.com. Uh, you can see all the work there. They started posting stuff on Twitter, on all, all the social media. They got a bunch of responses. And one of our favorite games is Hammy Farmer, where you're a hamster and you're stuck in a ball and you have to farm at the same time. I know that sounds bad, it sounds weird, but it was fun as heck. And, we, and that game has gone on to be seen at the Indiana Hoosier Game Expo and a bunch of other places because guys, the thing is this, is that no game really lives unless you're playing it. No art really lives unless you're looking at it. No music lives unless you're listening to it. So you gotta make your stuff and then put it out there. Is that, does that make sense everybody? Hopefully everybody here at some point is wanting to get something out there. You don't wanna just hide it in your room and be like, yes, my yes. You don't wanna do that. You wanna get it out there, okay? So that's the, yeah, that's the thing there. So anyway, uh, uh, any, any questions right now? Uh, Quentin, anything, anybody else talking? Anybody? We'll fix some of this stuff in post, Angela, but no. <laughs> but if anybody has any questions, let me know in the chat here. So the thing is, is let me, let me bring this up right here. First off, what I wanted to show you guys is they are, if you guys are okay with it, I'm gonna share my screen here with, if you haven't, it's two minutes long. Angela, this is go good with everybody. This is the new trailer for Unreal 5, which we'll be coming to right now. We're currently working with Unreal Edition 4.25.1. And for those of you guys will get in here in the fall or the spring or stuff like that, uh, that'll be the engine you're working with. So, and oh, and then let me explain to you too, we also have advanced comic, uh, advanced history of games and advanced creature design. And I'll be going over that, some of that creature stuff tomorrow, but right now this is the game stuff. So I thought I would share with you guys, would you guys like to see what's coming down the pipeline, which we're getting to learn? Everybody good? Okay, thank you for, thank you, Quentin. I can feel you nodding. Okay, just a second, let me share my screen. And uh, we'll do this here. Now again, hopefully the sound, can everybody see my screen? All right, we'll do this. And, and you guys, this is insane because this is the next level of gaming. Here we go. Now, mind you, this took a team, you know, many, many hours, but this is inspiration. This is what we're trying to aim you towards. Yeah, no more uh, polygon budgets, but that depends on your computer too. Those bugs are actually our particles. Those are actually a particle engine causing those bugs to look like they're real. So are those bats. This is kind of like Laura Cro diet Laura Croft here. I could not do that. That's actually the entrance to the school, right, Taylor? Yeah. Okay, well, I hope you guys like that. So, uh, oh, let me turn that off here, it's still going. So anyway, so I wanted to show you guys that, but I mean, again, again, that's not meant to intimidate, 
that is meant to inspire. You see, that's the stuff we look for because right now you guys know what you like, you know what you love, and it, what Ira Glass calls the gap. So you know what you love and you know what you, what, what you want to reach for. So that's why we look at this inspirational stuff. We get you in the classroom. We start working. Yes, your first couple of levels will be rough. But if they're not rough, then you don't need to be here. But they're going to be rough because you're going to learn and make it better and better and better. And then over the years, you're going to get, you know, sound and programming and other stuff and things are boosted. But so by the time you get to foreign level, you're ready to go. You got teammates. You know what's, who the people you want to work with and don't, and the ones you don't want to work with. And then after that, you get into independent study. You get into capstone and bada boom, bada bing. Depending on where we are with COVID, then you'll be able to show your stuff to the world. Okay, just like the kids last year at Advanced came, they're 400 level, not even capstone stuff, and they got stuff on itch.io or itch.io as we call it. Okay, so that's the great thing about that. Let me see if I'm trying to show you this thing. So on uh, Epics, let's see if I can bring this Epics. Unreal QR code car. Sorry, I had this ready here, but yeah, there it is. There it is. There we go. So let me just show you this guy's here real quick to kind of inspire you guys again. This is from, and this is just from a couple of years ago. If you can believe this, okay? So when I jump back to my screen, can everybody see this again? Okay. So if you look at this, guys, okay, creepy ad. Sorry, I don't know what that's about, but just ignore the creepy ad. So the thing is here, guys, you'll see uh, Epic Games. I saw this in person. I saw this in person. We, they had the car on the stage. You'll see this right here? That car is fake. You see that red car? That is fake, guys. So this is what it is in real time. You can put any color, any exterior, interior, et cetera, but the car itself is that. Do you see that? So that's the car that's being driven by a guy or a gal. There's QR codes and color codes across the whole thing. And this thing's like a transformer. It can get big for a van. It can get long for a station wagon. And then it's, it's this. It's this right there. So that's why engines are becoming more and more and more important just because of, look at it. There it is. Look at that. So isn't that amazing? That's the sort of stuff we want you to get forward to. And then we want you to take this and put it into VR. We've had students do VR projects. We're experimenting with this stuff. We're a big exper experimental school. Look, see, there it is there. Here it is there. So, and then the other thing, by the way, I was going to show you guys this, is that the uh, list of Unreal games, if you log Wikipedia, these are all the games, look, Bioshock 2, all these things. Actually, what's probably better is if I just show you this, let me show you this. If you want to see the games, if you've played Unreal, you probably just don't know it. So that's the thing here. Let me bring this up. Okay, let me bring this up here to a, an appropriate slide. So if you want to know some of the games that have had this, by the way, of course there's Quake and Unreal and stuff like that, but Gears of War have played this, and I wonder if any of you guys have played this thing, you know. Let's bring it up. So there's Gears of War. You've got, uh, let's go, I got a lot of these. Hold on. Mass Effect, hopefully you guys have played the Mass Effect series. That's all done in Unreal. All the different aliens, all the different worlds, everything, all the different endings, the entire series, all the targeting systems, whatnot. Uh, of course, Bioshock, the entire famous Bioshock series is done with Unreal. So yeah, I know I sound like an Unreal fanboy, but I'm trying to get you guys excited for this stuff, okay? And then, uh, oh, by the way, there's, this is my TA, by the way. Angela, I tell you, love this. So there's my old TA, Brat. And she actually cosplayed as a big sister from Bioshock 2, because we have a cosplay club, kids. We got a bunch of people that come. Well, I don't know about this year with COVID, but they are working on the week. They work uh, on the Fridays and Saturdays and they make this costume. And she got first place at Gen Con. So that was exciting. There she is on our school stage down the auditorium. But then uh, Borderlands was made with it. Um, if I'm going too fast, we can slow this down and post. Batman Arkham Asylum, we found a bunch of glitches. Uh, anything by Tom Clancy is used on this thing too, okay? Uh, Mirror's Edge, if you guys remember that amazing game where you're jumping, doing super steroid-induced parkour from place to place to place. Turok, the old Turok, which is probably before some of you guys were born or your parents, that was done in Unreal. And also, yay, Connect Adventures was done in there. Also, something I don't use, and that is Zumba Fitness. That was made with Unreal. As you can tell, I have Gamer Bod. And I do not do it. Also, some of you guys not be yeah, Harry Potter, what that Lazy Town, the Lazy Town, all of this in the background behind the creepy pink girl is all done with Unreal. You see, it's all done with that right there. So that's the thing about it is that it is prolific. Let me let me change this down here. It is prolific and it is all over the board. And like I said, one of the biggest developments is there are actually a lot, three or four firms in Japan using this for architectural design. And we've actually had two students, uh, Colin Mowry. He, uh, he got an internship with one of the local 
uh, I'm trying to, it was a home building, uh, home building company or something. I forget the exact title, but he basically worked for a company and instead of having to build model homes, he was able to build stuff in Unreal and uh, then put it in VR. And then people, before they bought the house, they were able to put on the VR headset, walk around a fake house. And it was far cheaper, it was more efficient. And if they were like, hey, I want marble instead of wood, they click the button and bada boom, bada bing, there it is. And we got a guy, uh, another guy, Daniel, who's actually working for the city of Indianapolis and he's using the Unity engine not to make games, but he's using it to, de to design and develop neighborhoods. So cul-de-sacs, uh, creek runoffs, housing plots. So he said it's like making a game, but you're not uh, going after anybody. He's like making the levels. He's making the whole thing. So that's pretty cool where that whole thing goes. So uh, any time for questions, you guys, we're doing pretty good, 350 here. So I've got some other stuff to show you, but uh, anything else right now? Anything from the chat from you guys? I will wait awkwardly. Game design isn't even my thing, and I'm so excited to work with this stuff. Quentin, yes, see? That's why we do this, why Angela and Taylor do this. See, again, like I said, if this is your main track, go for it. If it's an elective, go for it, but it's not going to hurt you to learn some of this stuff. We have a lot of people that will transfer from sound and 3D and other programs into the game track and vice versa. Like a lot of the uh, 3D students will come in, and they will take what they've made in Albert and Zeb's class, and then they put it into the Unreal level. One of my favorite things, and you guys are gonna go, what? But we actually had a guy who was a 3D student who worked with Spore. We used Spore in a creature class, but he worked with the old Spore game, made a bunch of alien creatures, exported them out into Maya, took them from Maya into Unreal, and then made a racing game where you raced around in a museum between all these strange creatures. And then, okay, Maddie P is saying, uh, what kind of computer would you recommend for using Unreal? I'm able to get a computer for college and I don't know what to get. Well, uh, I got to say that is the one little trick here. Unreal is free and Unity is free. And like I said, they used to cost money, but then they both kind of outdid each other. So even though the programs are free, you will have to get kind of an endorsed computer. And I can send stuff to Angela and Taylor for you guys. I would recommend, honestly, a PC first and foremost, uh, and, then, uh, and then a desktop if you can do it, just because if you're going to work with Maya, if you're going to work with the stuff that we work with, you're going to want to have at least a desktop. Laptops can work, but what happens most of the time, people will uh, buy a computer and they'll have it just good enough to run the level, but not the hundreds of forests and trees and things and stuff like that that they work with. So I'll send the, uh, Angela Taylor, I can send you specs on stuff, uh, but don't worry guys, the, big, the, the, the good news is that, you know, even with COVID, we've got a great program for the fall and the spring. The labs are gonna be socially distanced. I'm sorry, Angela and Taylor, I don't know if you've talked about this, but I've been talking to Kim, there's gonna be every other computer. And then if you don't wanna do that, they're setting up remote desktops so you can log in from your own computer and work there. So, and how are they gonna make sure it's socially distanced? Well, they're getting rid of the keyboards and the mice. I love that. So you will have to work at every other computer, okay? So that's the thing there. Now, uh, let me tell you one thing real quick here about the class itself. You see, the one thing I was telling earlier is that we really do try to have a right, central, and left hemisphere. Because some of you guys are going to be more right brain like me, the media arts side. And some of you guys are going to be more left brain like Travis on the science side. So what we try to do in the game track is we try to give you a central track where you get the basic gaming knowledge. And then if you want to go the right track, the right hemisphere, you go into art and you go into, you know, creature design and character design and, and 3D. And if you're more left brain, then you go into programming and databases and interfaces and things like that. And then you come, it all comes back together. So you all have a central pillar. I hope you can see my hands. And then it all comes together at the same time. So we recognize that there are left, right, and middle brain people. And then in my class, like in 230, the first half of the class is just making trees and rocks and land and just putting stuff together. And then after midterm, it is all about the programming. So we do basic programming. We do basic interactions, you know, make a door open and shut. Uh, everybody loves the moving platforms. Uh, you know, put us, we had a gun one time that shot uh, starfish. That was a fun time. Uh, every year the school gives me a budget to buy stuff off the asset store. And one year we made a, uh, a level where whales just fell out of the sky. It was hilarious. They didn't get hurt. They bounced. And we just do all kinds of stuff. So then, so the second, the first half is building the world. The second half is make it interactive. And then you walk out with a published level. Now, again, it's a little rough. Sure, it's your first time but it's good, get the rough out now so by the time you graduate, you're all smooth and polished. So one thing I was gonna show you guys too here real quick, let me bring this back up here just a second. Uh, I was gonna show you the programming here uh, to give you an idea, not to scare you, but let's bring this up here. Uh, they use a program called Blueprint and Blueprint is actually a, a discrete logic node, visual node system 
which uh, Unity works with. So, and Taylor, oh, you already got that. Wow, thanks. Hey, thanks. Hey, thanks, Taylor. So, um, let me put this up here. So, again, guys, the cool thing is if you're, okay, now, again, there's line-by-line -line programming, and then there's this. Everybody see this? This is node programming, and I love this. Now, some people will argue with me, but Unity and Unreal both have line-by-line -line and visual programming. So you can switch between the two, and some schools use it to actually teach. So if you look at this right here, you'll see that, can everybody see my little mouse moving around, Taylor and Andrew? Okay, look at this. So right here, you have an event that says, when the actor or the character goes over the door, what's gonna happen? Well, so there's gonna be an animation that plays, and then they're gonna look for the door's location, and then they're gonna, they're gonna go back and find out where the actor is. And if you don't, if you stop it, then it's gonna delay and it's gonna reverse the action. You see that? And then down here, you've got the game starting. It's going to set the door, look for the actor, bada boom, bada bing. Is that, I know that seems a little bit odd, but does that make sense for everybody? I mean, it's real simple. It's like, if the guy touches the door, it's gonna open or do something. It's gonna find all these locations. And then if you stop with the door, it's gonna shut. That's basically the whole thing. So, and that's where we start off with. And again, I hope that doesn't scare anybody off, but that's where we do it. So it's not intimidating. I know how to, it's a, it's a shallow to the deep end, but you guys will be doing backflips off the high dive before you know it. But it is up to you guys. I have to tell you, that's one thing about college. I will tell you guys, it, we only can do so much. We meet every week for about two or three hours, especially now with the, with the current COVID situation. You know, I'll be making videos and doing stuff. And then you guys will be up to you. It's up to you guys on what you do, the questions you ask, how much you put into this thing. So that's the important part. Remember, guys, you're on your own. You're, you're not on your own, but you are more on your own than ever before. So it's a combination of working with your professor, working with your fellow students, and then sitting down and going, I'm going to do this. So, all right, now let's see if I can get this working. I know I've got 355. So Angela and Taylor, I had a couple of examples. Anybody want to see some examples from students? That seems to be the biggest selling point of this. So let me go ahead and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Thank you, Angela. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. And yes, by the way, guys, I do dress like this. This is me normal. This is me without even five hour energy. This is actually water. So there you go. Now, again, here's the situation. Let me, these will, let me change my screen here just a second here. I'm going to go with Mark Roblins. This is a first year student, had never done Unreal before, but Rob did bother the heck out of me and I loved it. Talk to me after class, send me emails, talk to me. We go shoot the stuff back and forth. And uh, this was his level. So I'm going to try to get that going because again, it, I have several screens here like any super geek. So just a second here. So what we do, okay, I'm gonna share my screen with this other one. So just a second here. All right. Sorry, just a second. Oh, there it is, okay. Sorry, even, even my uh, Zoom is having trouble with this. Oh, there we go. It's a little slow. Okay, does everybody see this? Okay, sorry, there's music, so I gotta talk over it. So he wanted to make a weird, he started off saying he wants to make a weird alien world. Now again, we, didn't, we don't work on the character, we do that later. But this is an exploratory alien level. So you walk around and he found all these designs, he made some of these textures. That those are uh, foliage crystals. Oh, see, I just got upgraded. I think I died. I don't know what happened. I, oh, I died. I'm sorry. I died. <laughs> it needs a game manual. All right, you guys want to start that again? Okay, remind me not to go into that. I'm trying to think if I can collect the, yeah, I collect these. So that's basic programming. Basically what happens, guys, is when I interact this thing, sorry, I can't do the sound. But look, it, it literally just disappears and causes a particle reflect, a particle action. So I think this is pretty good for like 16 weeks. And now not everybody does this, but again, it's up to what you guys do. So let's get this one. Ah! Now the music's public domain. We have a very big thing about not plagiarizing. So everybody has to do the original stuff. I think I've got them all. Okay, I must be missing one, but there's that. So, actually, I feel like I'm in a club and it's kind of relaxing. All right, so let me let me quit this real quick and then stop share. So, uh, anybody liked it? Any comments on that one? Quentin, can I get a nod? 
<laughs> I'm teasing. Anyway, let me show you this too. Okay, so now uh, Robert Burita, he did a very interesting level where uh, he, he didn't like the main character. So he switched out the, uh, oh, thank you, Logan, I appreciate it. Uh, he switched out the character with a cube. So I thought that was kind of fun. Hold on. Zoom does not like Unreal. Here we go. All right, can you guys see this? Look, I'm a cube. I'm just a cube. Now this one was great because he, he used some imported assets, but then he was like, you know what? I'm a 3D guy and I'm gonna use Blender. So most of this stuff is just Blender, high polygon count, very stylized, really works with the level. See the particles? Those are unreal. And I'm a, part, my, I'm a particle guy. I love particles. Magic, you know, yeah. See, I show them the collection. See, you know, the collection mechanic is very easy to use. But yeah, no, I'm a particle guy because fish, birds, magic, leaves, fire, all that stuff is particles. And I've even worked on a few capstones and done the particles with them. So that's been exciting. Twice, Angela and Taylor, I don't know if you know this, we had two groups uh, over the years that they were 30 people plus. It was a little nuts. We try to keep people at 10 people now, but uh, yeah, we had, and Zeb was actually a part of one of those groups when he was over at, uh, at his other place. So, but see, here's this little cube just in minding his own business. So there's that. And then this other one I'll show you here real quick. This is done by uh, Angela. Oh no, it's not Angela, it's Amelia. Excuse me here, let's bring that up. Yeah, Amelia did this one. So yeah, no, yeah, no, this is Polina. Okay, this is Polina. All right, let's see this one here. Oh yeah, really? It's not that bad, seriously. So while that's coming up here, I'll just go ahead and talk to you for a second, though, because again, oh, thank you, Quentin. It reminds me of Minecraft. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If you guys, I mean, I, I wouldn't want you to make Minecraft, but if that's what inspires you, that's what goes for it. See, everybody comes to the class and they write a game design treatment. They say, I'd like to make a polar level or a desert level, or I'd like to make some kind of bizarre alien futuristic thing like what Mark did, you know, and so then we work towards that. Now things will change, things will alter. One of the things you guys will need to learn is adjustment, adaptation, evolution. You know, there will be disappointment, there will be joy, there'll be wins and losses, and it's really learning what you can and cannot do and learning to do time management. So that's one thing the game definitely will teach you across the board. So, all right, so let me, uh, let me start this one here. Oh yeah, this is the horror game here. This is, okay, yeah, just a second. Let me, uh, let me uh, get out of this. And we got that working. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen now that it's working. And let's share screen one. All right, everybody can see this. So again, this is Paulina's, and uh, this is the horror game. So as you can see here, we start, and you can see she's done some great stuff with the lighting. And then I walk up and, oh no, I'm, I'm a vampire. I don't know what, I, oh God, okay. See, and that's her own voice. I love it. She recorded her own voice and put it in there. See, there's a bunch of creepy stuff, you know, and again, these are assets. And a lot of people will do, a, one of the biggest things is materials. People can go out and take pictures of grass. One guy put a picture of his mother in there. He took a picture of his mother, took it into Photoshop, put it in a frame, and then put it in the game. See this? So, and look, there's this beautiful environment outside. And then one guy, of course, did the, uh, yeah, oh, no. You can get check out, but you would never leave. That's our school motto. No, I'm teasing. Anyway, but the, <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing. But no, um, one guy actually did the Han Solo and Carbonite. He took a picture of himself going like this, and then he put it in the Photoshop and brought it in. He looked like he was in Carbonite. So, Let's see, okay, I think it froze on me here, just say, yeah, it's freezing. So, oh, uh, the one thing I was gonna show, I know the way out here, it's actually through the water. There's much more to explore, but you can jump into the water and then, sorry, it's lagging, guys, I'm doing too much here, but you see that? Look at those beautiful water particles. And that particle is actually a snow part, oh, here we go, oh, watch out. See, now I gotta watch these spikes. Oh, I got, I got hit, so, all right, I'll quit that. So, okay, and then the last one here, I was gonna see if I can find this one here. Let's see, where is it? Amelia's was really good. Now that's Burita's. All right, hold on here. Let me stop sharing for just a second. Sorry, I don't mean to waste the time, but there's a lot going on there. Let's see, that was Polina's. That's Robert's, okay. 
All right, here, now Amelia's is a little bit more domestic, I would say, a little bit less creepy. Uh, oh, yes, Maddie, Jax will be there. For those that don't know, I do have two sugar gliders called Jax and Pax, and normally they like to sit, now in a regular class situation, they would be inside of my vest here, but now they actually run around on me during the Zoom sessions and stuff. So yes, Jax and Pax will most certainly, Jax is getting really big and chunky, and Pax is still, well, he's, he still needs to eat more, but let me show you this one by Amelia. This is a really good one here. Because the thing that I get aggravated with, a lot of people think that gaming is just, you know, a guy's thing, and it's, it's not. I mean, we have an equal amount of uh, men and women, and we're always trying to encourage other races in there, too. So let me go ahead and let's shut this down. Okay, there it is. Because gaming's for everybody. I don't care. We're all nerds. We're all geeks. We're all welcome. So see, the plane crashed. Taylor, Angela, you guys see this okay? Okay, and then there's Mr. Pig. Now see, what's great is that's an asset that she, we brought in and she figured out the way to actually animate it. So here's a puzzle game where you run around and sorry, the motion blur is on. And this is all foliage with the foliage tool. Like I said, that's all landscape. That right there is all sculpted by hand. So we start off with a flat piece of uh, polygon paper, so to speak. And then we, um, we carve it and shape it. And then you see all these materials? That's actually four or five materials, which are called alpha painting, where you paint it in and out. You see that? See how it turns from sand to grass and back again? So yeah, um, Amelia's here has all kinds of hidden stuff. Ooh, pretty, okay, sorry for that shot, but there we go. But uh, <laughs> keeping it funny. Well, also I do try to keep it fun, guys. I know I'm hyper, but you know, if you're not having fun making a game, that will make itself into the game. Nobody wants to play a depressed game. Well, unless that's your goal you know, unless it's something thought provoking like Undertale. Oh, look, there's a fish. So look, and look at that. Yeah, she was working with mirrors. That's a mirror material. It's a little bit different. Didn't get it to quite work, but that's okay. I mean, for level one, this is pretty darn good. So there we go. Let me quit that right there. Let's go ahead and stop sharing there. So. Oh, I will bring this up too. Like one of the things that we did, uh, and I mentioned this before, and don't worry, I'm watching the time here, is, uh, is try to get this stuff out there. So I'll try to find the links and stuff, but let me go ahead and share this with you too. Uh, this right here, guys, is my folder of evidence. So right now we had to, the kids, what the kids in the fall made a game called Adventure, Adventure Purr, where you're four cats. You see that? So you're four cats on an adventure. And it was a, a, a mobile LAN game, which you could play on any computer anywhere. And let me bring this over here. So see, this is, see, so again, on December 7th, yeah, Oublet Fete, this is the name of the group. They had the game out there. They had the screenshot. They got five likes on this thing. They actually learned, to, and I mean, it's all common sense, but it's one thing to do it personally. It's another thing to do it for your video games. So those are the characters. And then you can see the different dialogues. Here's a little shot of uh, Hammy Farmer. Let me bring that back over. See, so again, you're a little hamster and hammy ball and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to farm at the same time. So again, Unity Unreal coming together. And these are teams of about four or five people. And it was very interesting because in this game, hopefully everybody can see me now. In, the, in this class, we walked out with an Unreal game where you were playing parkour, you were jumping from building to building. We walked out with a Unity game that was four cats on a medieval adventure, which was a party game. Then we watched that, walked out with a hamster farming game, which was kind of like Super Monkey Ball. And then the guys, a bunch of the super nerds, yay. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you, Taylor. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the thing is, is that with the, the guys, if you've never heard of it, they made a MUD, which stands for Multi-User Dungeon, which were some of the first games made back in the 70s and 80s. Again, I'm a huge history of gaming buff. And not to toot my own horn, but if you guys have ever seen uh, the Crash Course series, uh, done by the Vlog Brothers. They actually, there was a guy in my class who then went to work for them, and then he went from my student to being my boss because then I made 20 out of the 29 episodes for Crash Course Gaming, uh, which was amazing. And so basically my lectures got turned into YouTube videos. So yeah, Taylor, I don't know if you find that link, but yeah, Crash Course Games, it's, so when people go, hey, Powers, hey, uh, Professor, what, do I, what am I gonna do? How can I study for the final? I go, go watch Crash Course. Go watch, the, go watch it. So uh, that was fun, but 
But like I said, the MUDs were early games where it was all just text, you know, like a D&D &D game. So these guys made a modern MUD, and because of databasing, they had hundreds of options. So you walk in your room, you're like, I look to the left, I see a goblin, I go up to the goblin, he shakes your hand, now he's trying to stab you, now I fight him, now I've got his gold, boom, 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 boom. So yeah, Quentin, yeah, yeah. So Quentin, the first 20 episodes are as my stuff, but again, I don't want to sound braggy, but I'm like, hey, it's the one thing I got. And because you never know what's going to happen, guys. You might meet your future mate in class, your future boss, your future employee. You don't know. I know of many people that there's been at least two groups of people that have gone out after this and uh, made their own game companies and do their own stuff on the side. And then like with the creature class, and I'll say this tomorrow, we had a student, Melissa Caprione, who did a bunch of illustrations in the class. And then uh, from those works, she got a job in Britain illustrating children's novels. And now she's an independent comic creator. And it just, you know, if you put your back into it, guys, you can do it. So, uh, yeah, no, it was fun. I would have done the other eight episodes or so, Quentin, but then school started. So I was like, guys, I love you, but I, I got <laughs> I to gotta teach. So that was the thing. So I got about four, oh, I got four and 10 on my side. Uh, I could show some more stuff or Angela Taylor, you want to open up for questions or what do you guys want to do? Sure. I mean, we have about 20 minutes, so you could probably go 10. If you have more stuff, you could probably show a few more things. And then okay. okay. Well, yeah, no, I, like I said, I have more than enough stuff. Yeah, just, let's leave yeah. just like 10 minutes. I feel okay, like we've well, been asking questions, so you could just keep going. And if questions come up, just throw them in the chat. We'll just go until 4.30. Okay, awesome. Okay, great. So let me go ahead and bring this up then, just a second, because uh, I have to move things around here just a second. So this is one thing too. So you guys saw the landscape, right? You saw that landscape. One of the things we really look at is how this stuff works. So you'll get this in my class, but let me give you like a little sample lecture right now. Uh, one of the things I'll show you guys, let's see, just a second, let me bring this over. All right, this will be good. Okay, let me share my screen with you again. Sorry for all the back. Well, this is just Zoom culture. It's just, is it on? Is the sound? Is the dog barking? What's going on? Can everybody see this? Can everybody see the mountains? Okay. So this is like our basic landscape lecture. So by the way, guys, what I try to provide for everybody is this. We have, I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm super OCD, so I have a lot of notes. So I kind of make these reference notes for everybody so you can learn what to do, how to do it really quickly. And then when you look at this, you see, so that landscape, one thing I love in addition to particles is landscape. So again, you can see here, and I'd make this full screen, but it'll, it'll cut out what I, I can't see you guys. So you'll see here, this is what, you know, God, nature, the universe, chaos, whatever you believe in came together. And back in the 50s and 60s, computer scientists were trying to make this a three-dimensional environment. They found maps didn't work. It was actually these, topographical maps. So you can see here, this is the highest point, the summit or the zenith at 5,117 feet. And then you've got 5,100. And if any of you guys are Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, you know that the, 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 the more condensed the lines, the, the more of the, the, uh, uh, the curve. So basically, this is one of those big mesas like this that go straight up like this. So the more condensed, the more steep the angle. And then you see how they smooth out like that? That means it's nice and flat. So what's amazing is they started looking at, you know, all these maps like this, and then they came to this. This is actually, so you can either sculpt it by hand or you can make one of these gradient maps. And what's amazing here is that you can design this and you can put this into the game engine. And what happens is, is that there's a rate, there is a level between zero and one. Zero is black and one is white. And anything that's zero is gonna to be totally flat and anything that's white is gonna to be totally super top, right? At the very, very top. So when you look at this, uh, the way I think about it is like snow in the mountain. So. I don't know, uh, Taylor, Angela, I'll put you on the spot or I can't see the chat right now because I'm doing this. What do you guys think this looks like? If, this, if the white is the top and the black is flat, what do you guys think? Sorry, I put you on the spot, but I love you. What do you think? What kind of environment are we looking at here? My guess is mountains. Yep, yep, sorry. And Angela, what'd you say? Oh, I said the same thing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So basically what you guys are looking at, look, so if you put this in the engine, all of these would be mountains, and then what's totally flat? Lakes, rivers, things like that. So these would be totally flat, and then when you put light on it, bottom, look at that. See that? Then you get that moving. Then you actually start to put light on it. Then you combine it with the art, which are, these are concepts, these are, this is concept art from Unreal 3. And then after that, you start making a game. Now I'll skip ahead here, because there's a lot of inspirational stuff here. 
and then you get stuff like this. See, this is World of Warcraft. I don't care for the horde. I am an old World of Warcrafter. I don't care what you guys are. It's beyond your time. And but this right here again, this is a combination of everything we do. Here we have hand sculpted terrain or landscape. And you guys notice we have static meshes which have been made inside of Maya and brought in. And then the great thing is like what you saw in the other in the other stuff, you'll see here that this path uh, has rock, it has gravel, it has yellow, it has green and brown. Now see, the thing that we want to do is you want to try to make this as immersive as possible. So you'll notice here that we have this path and then why do you think that we have, why do we have yellow next to the path? Can anybody tell me the logic behind that? Why don't we just have green all the way up to the path? And again, Taylor, Angel, I can't see the chat. So if anybody in chat has anything, let me know. Come on, Devin, Logan, come on, Maddie, take a, take a chance on this thing. Clinton, you're my nodding, buddy. Has anybody got a guess? Okay, sorry. I literally can't see the chat when I do this like this. So anyway, well, guys. We hey, we have one. So Logan Douglas said the grass dies when people walk slightly off the path. Uh, hey, 10 points to Gryffindor. Very <laughs> nice, sir. Very nice. By the way, we're also Harry Potter fans and Pokemon. You got to get used to that, guys. I'm sorry. Quentin said nodding in confusion. Okay, good. Well, then I want to see what that looks like. So this is, this is him nodding in confusion. So basically, I'm a Quentin, I love your nodding. But uh, sorry, I will say I do an entire day on Pokemon in the creature class, so we're ready for that. But no, but yeah, no, Logan's right is that it makes sense because you know, you guys know how it is. When you walk on a path, there's always a friend that walks off of it. So that these are characters that have walked off the path and killed the grass. So you've got the path, and you've got the dead grass, you've got the green grass, you've got the, the dirt and the uh, earth. And here's what I love too, here's what I love. You see how the green goes down this right here? Because of rain and erosion, grass will follow it down the sides. They're that, you know, OCD. They're that, has that much attention to detail. And then as you look at this thing, you guys can see that, well, I have a lot of World of Warcraft examples here, hold on. And you see right here, again, this is an example of alpha paint. Does everybody see how this clamshell repeating pattern actually goes into the grass and the dirt? Well, what's happening is, is that this texture is part of a material which covers all the land. And then what you can do is, is if you want another path, you just unpaint, which sounds odd, but you would erase the rock, the dirt, and the grass, and then that path would show up. So if I wanted to do an update of the game, I put a building here, but see the problem is, see how these are all pointing like this way? If I paint it perpendicular, it's gonna look odd, right? Well, guess what you do? You put down another texture that points in the other direction, and now you've got a path that curves. Isn't that fun? So that's the thing that you got going across here. And this goes across all games, all av avenues, all aspects, things like that. And then let me go ahead and stop sharing this with this so that I can see the chat. So yes, Pokemon Day. Yes, exactly. Because Pokemon is full of cultural references. There's a lot of stuff from Japan. Uh, there's just, you wouldn't believe the depth of the Pokemon creation process, okay? Uh, so uh, now let me bring this. So the last thing I had for you guys here too, which will be good, is actually see the engine in action. So let me bring that up here. It's a big hefty boy. So let me go ahead and bring this up here. So let's, uh, let's see, let's go to screen two again. So you'll see here, you see this right here? So these are, oh, get out of here. So these are previous projects. This is what, now we did uh, an I do camp, as you guys know, a little while ago. So this is what we made in the I do camp. So we did, <laughs> so I'll come over here and I can see, I could do new project and see, we could have first person flying handheld. And by the way, for the super programmers, we can do line by line C++. Or you can do blueprint, blueprint. And here's the thing. If you're having trouble with line-by-line -line programming, you can look at Blueprint to help you or vice versa. So it's, it's, it's amazing how much it can help you. So let's go to projects. Here's our game test. Let's open this up. Let's see how ridiculous myself and the other high school kids did over the week. So Angela Taylor, this is what we did for a week. I mean, this is what we did as a group. Hopefully it'll come back here in just a second. I'm going to stop sharing to the, so you don't have to stare at Zangra Marsh and a bunch of mushrooms across the board. But... But also, guys, like the thing that the game, the game program, okay, here it comes, and I can't see you. The game, I'll, I'll look at the camera. The game thing, the game track will teach you about, you know, spatial reasoning, fun. You know, a lot of people will put a building here, the building there, and like, why did we, you know, why did we, you know, why is that not fun? Well, because you're running for 30 seconds, you know what I mean? Or some people will study how big a room has to be. You know, in the United States, the average amount of space that humans require in the United States is a three foot radius. 
Now in Japan, it's about one foot. In Germany, it's about five feet. So it, there's all these different cultural aspects that we try to work on to make a games feel, you know, open or big or small or tight or put together, et cetera. So, oh, Logan, you were part of that? Sorry, Logan. I got pretty, oh, good. So, you know, except this year it was online. So I'm waiting for it to load right here. And that's the only thing for some of you guys talking about this stuff is that the engine can be rather heavy. So that's, that's the only catch. You can do some amazing stuff, but you will have to wait on some, you know, wait on some load times there. Hold on just a second. Uh, okay. Well, it, it was launching here just to say, let me launch it again here just a second. It reverted back to it. But I will tell you this, we just got some free stuff uh, from the tech department. We got a white dragon. That was cool. It moves around. We got a bunch of inside. You wouldn't believe how exciting it is to get a chair or a fork or a milk jug that you don't have to model yourself. That, it, it's kind of fun how you do that. So, so my apologies, guys. I thought that I launched it, but then, oh, wait, it's coming up here. Just a second. So I'll leave it open to some questions too. Otherwise I could just keep rambling because I am paid to talk three hours a day, every day, nonstop. But <laughs> Angela and Taylor know it is, it does say lecture in the title. It does not say researcher, but we do do a lot of research too, guys. The other thing that we work with is like the AVL, the Advanced Visual Laboratory. We uh, take a lot of projects into that. One of our great uh, adjunct professors, Chauncey Friend, which you guys might have talked about, he's really using Unreal and Unity in collaboration with a set of VR uh, developments that he himself has pioneered. We put on a helmet uh, last, uh, last fall, and it was amazing because it mapped the room. So he had made a scene, but it mapped the room. So it actually knew where the chairs and the desks were. And so it mapped around it anywhere. And I could walk around with this room. And anytime I got close to a chair or a table, before I hit it, the scene went red and said, there's an object right there in front of you. So yeah, it's getting, it's getting kind of insane. So this right now, guys, the game is at 52%. So sorry, Angela Taylor, we, I had it up and then it quit and it reinitiated itself. So, but that's the other thing too, guys, is you learn patience. You have to, you're going to have to learn why there is an eraser at the other end of the pencil so to speak, is you have to start over, change this, change that. What I showed you with some of the student work, you know, um, you know, uh, oh, sorry, Angela, I just saw your question, because you're going to have to learn to go back and forth. What is unique about our game program? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> there's a, no, I'm just, well, there's a lot. I mean, it's one of, one of the things is that we're one of the oldest game programs out there. A lot of other schools have had game programs. They've come and gone. We take it extremely seriously with the fun. And also, when I came here in 2007, we had three classes. And with the help of Travis and Todd and many other professors and deans and stuff, we've grown it into just an enormous, you know, just an enormous set of classes. I mean, you guys can have classes from freshman through senior year. Also, through our director, Zeb Wood, and my own personal contacts, we uh, we have a lot of avenues for you guys to explore. And, you know, when it's running, we go out to GDC, Game Developers Conference. Uh, Professor Travis Foss has all kinds of local conferences. We've shown our games off at PopCon, Gen Con, Comic Con. Uh, and we, will, we'll full, we'll, we are full service faculty members. Because I want you to get your stuff out there. If I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't be here. You know, and what's great too is we have Train Jam. For those that don't know, uh, when the GDC is going, we've had students over the last four or five years, they get on a train in Chicago, and it goes 52 hours from Chicago to San Francisco, and they do nothing but make games. So they're not the best games, uh, but they're fun games. And uh, last year we had about 12, 15 people on the train. We had three deers, programmers, sound people, art people. They met other kids from around the country, and uh, they just made games. And then when they got to GDC, they were exhausted. They took a shower, and then uh, they put their games in the train jam game gallery, which was crazy which was totally crazy. Okay, finally, it's, it's now back up. So, so Angela, there's, uh, again, I need a list, but I mean, I've, honestly, we have grown the program to an all-encompassing thing where we reach out to all other tracks, other classes. We are very dedicated to getting you guys out there, and we will prod you in the back with a pitchfork to get your work out there as much as possible, and then also our community. You know, it's going to be a little bit different this year, but we have, we've had the Anime Club, the Cosplay Club, we have the Gamers Hall, we have eSports, uh, we have Women in Technology, MacGuffin Group, uh, 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 cast concept art society. So uh, when it's a normal year, any Friday, there's like 200 kids in there, not doing other things, but working and drawing and designing and programming. We also have um, game developers group. 
and just, you know, a lot of our kids are great because they will just work when they're not required to work. And that's, we create that culture. So, hey, look, it's, got, it's up here. I know we're almost out of time, but I wanted to show you. Can everybody see the engine? So this is the engine. I mean, this is literally what professionals will see here, okay? And if I don't chug, it's chugging a little bit. So this is what we made as a, as a, as a this is really bad. But see, so we have basically your basic engine stuff. You have your world outline that shows you what's in the world. You have your details. You have your assets. And then we just, we just had some fun. You can see we just experimented. There's a pirate ship. We made a forest of mushrooms. Now, mind you, this was just a little camp. And Logan, you know how it goes. So, and these are particles that we made as a group. Now, see, because the kids didn't have the program, so we did a group, a, a group collaboration, and we just made all this stuff. So when you hit play, it's called a WYSIWYG. So what you see is what you get. There's our, there's our wonderfully in-shape uh, silver guy, which I'm jealous of. So he can run through the particles. He can run through the forest. And look, some of the mushrooms are attacking the pine trees. And then we have all this. Oh, there we go. We have all these little assets and things and whatnot. And this looks very inconspicuous, right? Well, guess what? We programmed this to be a jump pad. Oh! Yes, and of course, it's over 9,000. Yes, everybody, it's over 9,000 in this. Yeah, yeah. So, and then we have kids that make portals and try to do the portal thing where they like that. So, uh, luckily, there's no death volume on this. So, I'm going to land. I don't know where. Oh, what's funny is sometimes we'll land on the, ah, oh, sometimes we'll land on that thing. And again, guys, it's just that easy. Now, look, I mean, I can come in here and I could come into the particle engine here like this. Let's go into that. See, here's our particle. I'll go here to initial size. Let's go ahead and make that uh, 50. See, look at that. Then we'll go ahead and make that 50, make that 50. And then if I, let's go, let's take the minute, let's take the Y, put that at 100. And now we've got down. Now here's a great thing. Look, I'm going to take a snapshot of it. I'm going to save it. And now it has propagated itself throughout the level. So I have now changed every instance of this. Oh, look, it's the light. Look, I'm going into the light. Wow, okay, sorry, it's getting weird. But see that, look at that. And so then imagine if you guys took your own art and your own designs in Photoshop, Illustrator, or you worked with our programmer. You can, and again, programmers, you can program those things to do just about anything. They can interact with you, they can kill you. They can be a power up. You could have fly turned on. There's just all kinds of stuff you can do. So, you know, that's, and then, oh, here, I'll show you one last thing here. I know I'm almost out of time, but here's the foliage tool. So let's go over here to uh, Pirate Island. Let's go to some decorations. Let's see if there's anything appropriate. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a barrel. I could drag the, and it's not, now again, I'm trying to make this look easy. It starts off easy, but then it increasingly gets more and more difficult like any other game. See, now look, I can make hundreds of barrels. See that? I just literally made hundreds of barrels. Blah, 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 there we go. And now we have to wait for the, uh, there we go. Oh God, look at that. We'll have to wait for the materials to come in, but that's, that's, how, you, that's how you do's. See that? So it, it, that's what we do Unreal first. Unreal is easy to get into and it increases as we go along. But again, we, we work with you guys. And then Unity is a little bit tougher. And then, you know, we prepare you. So it's like, you know, junior league, middle league, pro, you know, professional league. And then if you're working on your own, you'd be amazed what you can do. So let me go ahead and stop that. Sorry, I, I feel like a cat poster. You know, you can do it. So I got 426. Uh, was that pretty good? You guys like seeing that? Angela, Taylor, was that good? Was that decent? It was awesome. Well, thank you. So, I mean, again, I made it look so easy, but again, but see, that's a great thing is that you can just bring anything you want in, change it, alter it, adjust it. And, and like I said, programmers, designers, art people, it's just, it's open to everybody. You know, that's why the class is first half right hemisphere. And then the second half of the class is left hemisphere. And it's funny, all the artists love the first half, but then challenged by the second half. And the programmers are challenged by the first half and not the second half. So everybody's happy and everybody's frustrated, but you know what? You get respect. Because if I've worked at a few companies and if the artists know what the programmers are going through and the programmers know what the artists go through, then you have people working together. You don't have an artist being like, hey, I've got 20,000 legs on the centipede. Can you animate them? Can you program? And you don't have a programmer going, I need 15 pieces of art today. And that's not to mention the sound people, the project manager, the UI, you know, uh, voice acting work, all that stuff. So, so, you know, there you go. So I got three minutes. Is there any, okay, guys, we got three minutes here. What do you guys have for me? What else can I, what, how can we stick the landing, so to speak?
So I know that you're doing another one of these tomorrow. Do you yes. want to plug it? Mm. Oh, yes, most definitely. Yes. Well, thank, thank you, Taylor. Yes, my other giant passion outside of video games is creature and alien design. Because I feel like the more, if you can learn to accept something that has like three heads and polka dot stripes and eight wings and four stomachs, then you have an easier time of accepting other people, other genders, races, identities, et cetera. And we, uh, the more you learn about nature, the more you learn about the world, et cetera, the more you learn about fact, the better you can create your fantasy. And so the other thing that's really big out there is people want unique creatures and unique, uh, you know, I don't want to say enemies, but, you know, things interact, like Horizon Zero Dawn, where you're working with a bunch of robotic creatures, or Spore, or, you know, if you look at, you know, Qbert or Sonic. Sonic went through many, many different designs. And there are many people that want mascots and characters and things, and people are, are very, very hungry for unique stuff to think. We want people to suspend their disbelief. We, we try in that class to make creatures that are not Star Trek aliens, because everybody's, a, you know, a human with, like, a little bit of you know, skin adjustment with a skin condition. And then we try to make unique, the whole point of the class is to try to show us what we haven't seen before. And again, and that class is open to 2D artists, 3Ders, uh, storytellers or writers. And then we just had a sound student. We had a sound student for the first time in the spring and she uh, made, she had uh, sketches, but she made sound effects and wrote the paperwork and did mating calls and sounds of them grumbling and sounds of eggs hatching. And she's a sound student. And then her capstone is going to be about helping other people make games or sounds for their games, their creatures, their work. And she's already partnered with another student in the class. And uh, one student is drawing. And then the other, and then this other student, she, the sound student, she is, uh, she's doing the sound effects for it. So thank you, Taylor. So that's tomorrow. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of aliens and creatures and things that we look at. And, you know, again, but again, also I'm into storytelling, you know, comic books and, you know, visual storytelling, which are good for storyboards. Uh, and then, like I said, my other thing was history of video games, because you guys got to know where we came from. You know, there's a, there's a game in Ratchet and Clank at the end, Going Commando, which is a reference to a game called Space War from the 1970s. So you got to know the geeks and nerds and people that came before you. So, so but the, yeah, but thank you, Taylor. Yeah, so we got that going on. And we just, uh, even though we'll be doing a lot of stuff via Zoom this year, we're still going to keep the passion and the energy. And like I was telling uh, Taylor and Angela, you know, sometimes we even have like free open classes. Right now, one of the students from the summer creature class just made a Discord so he could stay in contact with everybody from the creature class so he keep his skills fresh. And now he's doing a bunch of stuff. Marcus, he's got an amazing voice, needs to do podcasts. Uh, he's doing a bunch of stuff on um, Instagram and other social media. So we, uh, and again, I may not get through to everybody, but we try to inspire you guys to take what you, and if, you, and if you've got notebooks and sketchbooks and ideas from high school, that's gold. That's absolute gold. Bring it to school. We'll bring it to life. Okay. And that's what a lot of people do. So then you go through the process, you go through the, uh, the works and you come out the other side and you show the world what you got. So that's about all I have. So okay. now aliens, that is my thing. I'm definitely going to be back. Okay, Quentin. Well, good. I'll show you a bunch of really, really strange things tomorrow. And tomorrow it's at three 30, right? Yeah. Okay. Same time. Yep. And Taylor just sent, if you haven't registered yet, you can click on the link in the chat that Taylor just included. Awesome. And so I think we're all good. Well, Matt, thank you so much. This was awesome. And we hope you guys took a lot away from this and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. Everybody. Thank you, well, thank you, Tana. Thank you, Angela. Thanks guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Some, some form or some version. <laughs> all right. Take care guys. Bye.